I hit a 4.0 semester this last semester of university. I got A's in all of my classes. I was close the previous few semesters, but this one I finally hit it. And yet, I don't feel like that's right, that I didn't work hard enough for all of those. I see the finalization of the grades and I'm immediately met with feelings of inadequacy. I only did well because I'm good at projects and Zoom University is right up my alley in some ways. Or I didn't actually study, I just paid attention in class, etc, etc. No matter how much I might remind myself or be told that I did well to get those grades or in the small moments where I feel deserving of those grades, I always return to the feeling of needing to do better. And this feeling isn't just with grades. It's something called imposter syndrome, a modern plague. We're surrounded by an immense variety of media today that tells you to keep moving forward, to keep striving for more, to always be productive, to let nothing stop you, to always go to the next level. While this mentality can be a good one, encouraging us to become uncomfortable in our present state, to reach toward an ideal future self, it can also be a dangerous one. And one of these dangerous side effects of these always keep pushing forward mindsets is imposter syndrome. If you're not already familiar with imposter syndrome, it can be described as a feeling or a syndrome in which you do not feel worthy of the credit you are given for the things you are done or where you are in life. You feel like an imposter. I had heard about it a while ago, but when it was first laid out to me in a TED talk, which I'll link in the description down below, that was the first time that I related with imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is dangerous because it leads to feelings of inadequacy or all around lethargy when it comes to what we're working on. It keeps us trapped in a loop of feeling like we always need to be improving at every moment of every day. Progress itself is such a long game and we can often lose sight of it. For example, if you play the piano and you finally learn a difficult piece that took you a long time to learn, and then you look at someone who plays piano for a living and start to feel jealous or inadequate, you forget to look back at where you started and how far you have come in those moments. Imposter syndrome robs us of the ability to celebrate where we are. It often makes compliments and congratulations feel misguided. It encourages a feeling of emptiness regardless of what problems have been surmounted. However, imposter syndrome can be fought. It's not as simple as creating the habit of congratulating yourself whenever you reach a milestone. It's not as simple as giving yourself a break. Sometimes those things can in fact make it worse. To combat this disease, we can't just do one thing. However, one tool that we can add to our tool belt is to create a system that reminds us of our growth. In other words, we must habituate constant acknowledgement alongside whatever things we complete, not after we complete them. I'm not the most concise person, so let's go ahead and pull from an everyday example from myself. I use Todoist every single day, and every day I set aside the goal to complete eight tasks, but due to the nature of how I work on things, I usually start every day with 11 to 12 tasks. This led to an incredibly poor habit. The last part of each day was me inadvertently reminding myself of what I hadn't gotten done and finding a time in the future to get those done. It left the day feeling incomplete and lost. Any time I finished a larger project, whether it be an essay or a programming assignment or a video, there would always be small tasks left over that I had to move to a future day. And then a friend told me a really simple thing that's been very helpful. And that is to, right after that, end the day by reviewing what you had completed. End the day by reviewing what effort you put into tasks, whether or not they were completed. The key idea is to applaud the effort that you put into tasks that day, not focusing on the result of whether you completed something or didn't complete something. Feelings of imposter syndrome come about when we applaud the results and then forget about the effort that we put in. You check off a big item on your to-do list and then you automatically forget that that took several hours over the course of the past week. On the other hand, if we consistently acknowledge the work that we put in to complete our tasks using software or not, we build up a habit to consistently acknowledge the effort that we put in. I feel a lot more deserving of that A when I remember how much debating I did with my classmates over problem sets pretty much every week. The problem sets when I get the grades back feel like, oh, okay, I did well on this problem set, but it's when I remember how many questions I had at the start only to finally complete a problem set do I feel like, okay, maybe I do deserve that 9.5. 
It's a difficult idea in the long term, to be honest, but in the short term, it can make a really big difference. At the end of the day, I move all my tasks, and then I revisit what I completed that day, what effort I put in, whether or not things got checked off. Sometimes I move a task, but I had actually gotten like half of it done today, it just takes more time than I expected it to. I applaud the effort that I put into my tasks that day, whether or not they get completed. Any conscious effort to improve is a good effort, and one always worth applauding, even if it doesn't yield an immediate result. While not a cure-all for imposter syndrome, reminding ourselves of what we've completed throughout the day is a consistent reminder that we are growing, that we are improving at what we seek to improve at. So when you do get to that next milestone, you think, yo, hey, I did grow, I did improve. Maybe this wasn't just dumb luck that I arrived here. Some days you won't make progress, but the important thing is that over a long period of time, when you do get to that milestone, you're able to look back and remember how much you grew, what effort you consistently put in to get to where you are, to deserve where you are at. You play a piece on the piano and you remember all of the hours you spent practicing. You release a web app and you look at all of the closed issues on GitHub. You remember how much effort you put into these things. It's not about the result, it's about the effort that you put in to get there. You have to applaud the effort, the struggle that you went through, and not just the result itself. The result is what other people see. It is the culmination of your effort, but don't forget that as you struggled, as you put in effort for this final result, you grew and improved as a human being and at whatever skill or project you are working on. It's not just dumb luck. Imposter syndrome makes us feel as though we don't deserve what we have worked for, as though what we are credited with was a big mistake. While the feeling may never go away, as humbling as it can be, applauding the effort that we put into the things that we love and not judging ourselves by the results of those efforts can be a large, positive leap toward fighting the elusive imposter syndrome. My name is Mark and I'm a student studying computer science and linguistics at NYU. I know this whole strategy of things might not change much, but I really do encourage you to at least give it a shot. Imposter syndrome is something that strikes me frequently on the day to day, and this small daily reflection helps end the day on a little bit of a better note. It's something that strikes me frequently and so I thought I'd share it because it does help me at the end of the day doing this small reflection. And give it a shot. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you, but if it does, all the better. I'd also recommend watching that imposter syndrome TED talk down below because really well spoken and if you can relate to it, you might discover a lot about yourself. Honestly, I watch the video like at least once a month and it's the inspiration for this video here. Anywho, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, feel free to check out some of my other videos. Subscribe down below if you got something out of this video. Leave a like, leave a comment telling me how you feel, what you got out of it. Is there something that you might try now to fight imposter syndrome yourself? Is there a strategy that works for you that you'd want to share with me? I'd love to hear it. All in all, thanks yet again for watching. Have a good one. Don't forget to applaud your efforts today, not just the results. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.